Team Tanker, and welcome to the WGLNA Qualifier Season 3. I'm Randall Rukil Holcomb. Joining me is Andre Gritor Pengshua. Hello, Andre. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Our matches are about to get started, Andre, oh, no. so we don't have a whole lot of time. It's kind of crazy. Semifinals, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, not semifinals, quarterfinals. I'm sorry. Yep. The top eight teams are left. Who are they? What are the matches for yeah, today? Our matches for tonight are Googly Bobbers versus Penguin Mafia. Following that will be C'est La Vie versus Resistencia Armada GE. I, I feel like I should call them Rage. LZ Slayers versus Sympasaurus Rex. And T32 Best Charade 2013 versus Victorious Secret. C'est La Vie really has impressed us a lot throughout these qualifiers, but we haven't really seen Sympasaurus Rex. Of course, we've known them to be previous qualifier finalists they g almost got in by the skin yeah. of their teeth they lost it really unfortunate for them but still a lot of fantastic teams t32 best tier 8 tank 2013 looking really really strong as well although they weren't really challenged yesterday i think mm -hmm. uh but of course our first match is going to be the googly bobbers Googly Bobbers versus Penguin Mafia. Yeah, both of these teams we've seen previously. The match has begun. The first battle will be on Mines. Let's go ahead and jump into game. Early game, super important. I want to take a look at these tanks, Andre. All right, let's do it. On Mines, we have two T-32s, a Pershing, and two 1390s against a T-32, two T-69s, and, a thir and two 1390s. So the big difference is the T-32 instead of a uh, T-69, and of course the T-69s all together instead it's of the Pershing. A very interesting choice. Got a lot of 90 mils, actually 105s being brought by Bolt Upright and Loose Change in the T-32. I do not agree with 105s being brought on T-32s. Yeah. North side is the Googly Bobbers, as red south side is going to be the Penguin Mafia. Uh, they're going up the middle really, really fast here. This is kind of surprising force trying to support their 1390s. Both teams have the same amount of 1390s, so they're trying to get that hill control. We're gonna and see here an we engagement. start. They're not reloaded yet. There's still a good 10 seconds before they're reloaded. Five, four, and these guys will start shooting now-ish. Just about one, and first shot's coming out. Zombie food takes the first oh, hit. Goes down man. to 317. Beautiful track shot by Terrible X. 98 hit points left, and he does get finished off by Terrible X. Completely crushed. Terrible X now going to be gunned down, but the fact that he's still firing. He may live. Oh, Tuxilla! Oh, oh Tuxilla down to 82 hit points, and down he will go. A great victory right here for the Googly Boppers. Beautiful start. Those beautiful focus fire as well, and if, if, if Terrible X had been able to survive, you would have seen a huge advantage, just overwhelming. But Penguin Mafia still has a chance. They put out a little damage, but they've taken so much in return. Baronish is down to half health, while their T-32s are still yeah. rather healthy. I'm sorry, I, I switched it up before. It's actually the Googly Boppers are blue team. M Penguin Mafia is red team. My okay, so, I, I said it wrong. Okay, so Penguin Mafia, huge disadvantage here. Googly Boppers, though, uh, with these T-32s, they have so many hit points, and they're using the 105s, which hit decently hard, but the pen... It's about 245 with gold rounds, which is, it's all right, but it's it's not as high performing as the yeah. 90 mil uh, gold rounds. Definitely so. And this is a tough position because they know a 1390 is up on the hill, and it's like they can't really retreat, else this is going to happen. Quick death, putting damage on Sovereign Zul. And as soon as the turrets are broken, now the Pershing and the T-32 are going to push forward knowing that, hey, they got the jump. Sovereign Zul taking a little bit more damage. 580 hit points down to 299. But Blaze Zero isn't being backed up right now. Bananas to the wall host will get the cleanup kill. But Loose Change and Bolt Upright are moving on in. And this isn't looking good for... Oh, I'm wrong again. I'm sorry. The googly You were boppers. right the first time. Yeah, I was right the first time. Yeah production guys they're messing with me yeah at least they tell us when we actually finally get it right actually t1s are facing off death warmed over and armor goes facing off slightly to the east of this but baronish is going to be finished off very shortly quick death is on a reload bolt upright and loose change will be able to come around and first shot is a bounce on the loose change second shot also is a bounce watch your shots baronish t1s finishing off that will be the last tank left alive in this battle wonderful victory for the penguin mafia great start for them that's right. I mean, everything looks so solid. But really, it comes down to uh, that engagement on the top, the two 1390s against two 1390s. As soon as one team dramatically wins that, the game's over. Because that mid control, if both of you are fitting, fighting for that mid control, whoever wins that, they're going to have superior position. They're the ones able to put small little pot shots, force you to make a move, and any move you make is bad. Yeah, and zombie food. 
was not able to get any damage out before he died. He yeah. actually fired twice. Let's go into detailed reports and we'll look at that too. Yeah. He gets two shots off, does not get any hits. He was not prepared for that engagement. That is one mistake I believe that was made. If he'd been more prepared for that fight, it would have been more even. And that and zombie food well, may have not yeah. have been able to get away with it's enough health to really continue staying potent. It really doesn't make sense that he didn't hit any shots, right? Yeah. I mean, he was stationary for a long time. I think the big problem is they weren't together. If you looked at the 1390s on the top, there were two that were really close together and two that were kind of disjoint. Yeah. And when you're disjoint, it's so easy to pick one of you off because you can't share HP. But when you're nice and close and together, well, you can share HP a lot better. So uh, I think the 1390 is really messed up that time, and that just sent the whole game in motion for a big win. Yeah, if Zombie Food had just not tried to run away and instead stood and fight, he would have died anyway. He would have actually gotten the damage out. Instead, battle number two looks like it will move over to... Actually, they're still picking the map. Well, uh, actually, one second. They're, uh, they're checking with the admin about something. I believe there may be a small dispute going on. We'll have to find out what exactly that is. Okay. Uh, we're going to actually take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we will have battle number two of the Goo Goo Boppers versus Penguin Mafia. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Our admin is still resolving the issues. So it's going to be a minute or two before we actually have the next battle begin. Uh, in the meantime, Andre, uh, we really missed out on the beginning of our show. We didn't tell you guys about the 742 rules, in case some of you are new to the format. Uh, in case you guys don't know, it's 742 here. We play seven uh, tanks per side with 42 points. Andre, uh, I think you can detail this. Sure, Raquel. Uh, it is 742, as we were talking about. Seven, seven players per team, 42 tier points. Max tier is eight. That means we normally have five tier eights and two tier ones. Now, those tier two tier ones we always talk about how important they are we'll get into that as we get forward into the games but it is a best of five overall you duke it out by either capturing the flag or by eliminating all of your opponent's tanks if there is a draw in an overall series we go to our shootout the shootout is where we just line everybody up on melanovka and they say we say go at it once that happens, last person standing will, of course, win the overall series. Yep. So uh, normally a lot of fun when we do go to the shootouts. We had a, a sh great shootout yesterday, um, but hopefully we don't have any shootouts today. You know, I always like just these these decisive wins from these teams. Yeah, going to a shootout is really risky, too. You don't want to have to hinge your entire victory on one shootout, which you may or may not be very well prepared mm -hmm. for because your opponent could be. It's a different way to play the game a little bit. And, yep. and like in hockey... It's decisive, yes, but it's uh, it depends on a on a set of skills that are are viable, but you don't get to use those quite as much in a sure. normal battle. But very uh, rarely do you get to line up to shoot at each other. Going back to the last series, though, I do want to talk about that. We had a situation where it was quite a different opening. Uh, no, I shouldn't say opening, but a quite different tanks in the very beginning stage. Mm -hmm. but the same opening. Now it was two T32s, two 1390s, and a Pershing against two T69s, two, th two um, 1390s, and a T32. I have to feel like the more mobile lineup, which is the two T69s, two 1390s, and the T32, should be winning that engagement the majority of the time. I'm not sure why it went so opposite, though. I understand the 1390 fight was not working out, mm -hmm. but in my opinion, because you have two T69s, you can bully the Pershing a lot easier. The T32s won't be around, and it's a 4v3 overmatch in the center. I'm really wondering why, well, first off, why the two T32 team tried to push up so aggressively, mm -hmm. and two, how they were able to win so dominantly. Well, with the uh, not so recent anymore nerf to the T69's heat pen, it actually only has about 250 heat pen, which is not quite sufficient to defeat a hull down Pershing or T32. You mm -hmm. can hit the hatch, yes, but it's an incredibly difficult shot to make, and it depends more on RNG than on your skill, I think. With such a thin shot, it's centimeters thin, when they're, especially when they're in hull down. They even trouble penetrating the front hull with 250 heat pen. Just T32 is a strong, well-armored tank. Yes, but but that's that's a little bit later on. I'm talking about the very beginning stages. Right it's begin two T69s, two mm -hmm. 1390s against two 1390s and a Pershing. I feel like the T69s should win 
100% of the time. You'd have to really engage heavily in order to get that done. And you have why to go, not? You, you could, but the T-32s are close enough. The distances between caps and the middle uh, makes it so I think the T-32s are able to support any kind of huge engagement by T-69s. Yeah. They could have gone to the hill, up into the hill maybe, but you're exposing yourself in the side. T-32s are in position to shoot on the move at T-69s moving up to the hill at that position. See, I, I would say yes to that, but you already saw the 1390 commitment, so yep. the T-69s pushing forward into the hill made just so much sense. It would have. To me. So it made so much sense. They were already loaded. Mm -hmm. One of them was putting damage on the Pershing. The other one decided to stay there and do additional damage on the Pershing. Of course, you were talking about hold down position, not that great. And they waited for the T-32s to come out. I felt like the googly boppers really missed out on a really big chance to just claim that hill, dominate both 1390s, and then from there, win the game. They're up two tier eight tanks. Uh, and that might just be a lack of uh, indecision, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. They don't want to commit to that too hard because obviously there is still wide range, but I definitely think they missed a big opportunity in that last battle. And I will say that Penguin Mafia going up, playing that aggressive with a Pershing and two T-32s, those things are, s are slow, by the way, the yeah. T-32s. And to try to take that center control, very bold move, very audacious. I think it doesn't work a lot of the times. But this time it did. Of course, their tanking was much better than their opponents. It was incredibly risky. The next battle is ready. It will be on Ensk. And I'm looking at the tanks. I see some really cool stuff. Let's get into battle. Battle number two, the Googly Boppers versus Penguin Mafia. Looking at tanks, it's a 5100, two IS-3s, a KV-4, and a 1390 against two 5100s, two IS-3s, and a 1390. Red team, Googly Boppers. Blue team, Penguin Mafia. As you can see, red team, Glue Boppers are starting south side, north side, Penguin Mafia. Yeah, I'm really confused, though, because I see a T1 without any equipment on. I don't think Bolt Upright was quite prepared with his T1 Cunningham. That's really going to hurt his ability to, per to perform in this battle. And uh, I, I think it really could come to bite the Penguin Mafia. It could, but, you know, uh, T1, don't get me wrong, T1s are so important. And to have that equipment, to even have, like, six cents, which is very hard to get. Um, so incredibly important, but at the same time, I think this is definitely a map where it wouldn't be as important as other maps. Yeah, it's certainly, certainly. But Blaze Zero also is just lacking in camo. I think it's just possibly a wasted tank. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. That's that's really bold to say. But um, uh, here we go. It looks like just the setup so far is very defensive from the Googly Boppers, as they are just. Preparing down the five line, um, a lot of the tier eight tanks are just, you know, super, super defensive. I'm wondering what the Kugli Boppers are trying to do. Penguin Mafia, what are they doing though? Well, Penguin Mafia taking up position in D1, D2, and uh, e E3. And they've got Terrible X actually leading the way into 1390, playing uh, a, 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 it's weird scouting here. He's just kind of poking around, and he has actually spotted Armor Ghost. He's going to take some fire, looks to land him a shot, but no, Armor Ghost does peek away just in time. Can't quite pen that sloped front of the 1390 very easily with a T1 Cunningham, but side shots do usually pen, or if you have any height on that, t on that 1390, it works, but no little bits of damage there. Uh, Terrible X, I don't know if I like this kind of scouting. It feels very uh, risky, because this can, 1390 gets caught out so easily. Yeah, you can do the same amount of scouting with a 5100. Right? And, he's, and he's beefier. And, yeah, exactly. More hit points, better damage, stuff like that. You have to use its speed. Normally, you'll put the 1390 on the 6 line, the 5 6 line around there, just to get a good idea of what's looking down your way. And at the same time, being able to have that mobile crossfire and getting into action very quickly. Yeah, the 1390 is a flanker in this situation. He needs to be getting in the backfield and around the sides, maybe getting a few free T1s here and there. Where is the 1390 for the Googly Boppers? His position is very important to the He's ways doing it correct. He's over on the sixth line. That is that is definitely the best way to do it. He can probably pick up Bolt Upright in just a minute or two. Actually, Bolt Upright has moved over way. Blaze Zero is still on the 5-6 line. If Blaze Zero gets caught out, which he's actually not spotting all that much right now. Uh, T1 just chilling out in the middle. Uh, Terrible X does look like he spot out Sovereign Zul. So the positioning out of the Googly Boppers is getting figured out. It's being figured out slowly that they are in that southwest quadrant of the map. And uh, as more and more tanks get spotted, Penguin Mafia will be more and more prepared to begin some kind of engagement that they could win. Yeah. I am surprised right now that Tuxilla didn't take advantage of the fact that there's a 1390 all the way over on the west side. Right now he doesn't know where it could be. It could have uh, you know, rotated all the way to the east side. 
but if I'm Tuxilla in that point of view, and he still knows where the Shots fired is. Terrible X is out in the open, and there is peaking. He is taking out to 748, but in response, Bananas the Wall Host has taken a few hits himself. Uh, and he is down to what? He's down to 925. 925. So he took two big shots. Yeah, that, that does hurt quite a bit. The KV-4 will actually give the Penguin Mafia a pretty decent health pool advantage right now, mm -hmm. because that thing, that thing is guaranteed to bound, uh, to, sorry, to uh, bounce a few shots. And it looks like Terrible X actually had a broken turret ring, which I don't know if he'll burn his kit on that quite yet, but he should hold on to that 1390 with a damaged turret ring. is so slow. Man, Tuxilla really not taking advantage of the fact that there's a 1390 over the west side. If you know that's there, a lot of times you're thinking to yourself, well, is there reasonably going to be another tank over here? Yes, there could be. Okay. Let's say it's a 5100. You can still manage a 5100, and you can go down uh, you know, certain lanes to make it a lot easier to just duck behind walls and cover it. Mainly, this lane right here. Just go straight forward, and you can, for the most part, see the, th the 5100 before it sees you. Exactly, and you could even play uh, like a, a hundred meters to his east, and he would be fine trying exactly. to get some scouting done. Even if he spotted out a T1, we could be seeing T1 advantage going to the googly boppers. It would be beautiful, yeah. and uh, I really feel like, again, the googly boppers are not utilizing their strengths right now. Even in the start, they haven't done anything. Like, they haven't looked to be aggressive. They're just defending this whole time. They're not really getting any intel either. Armor Correct. Ghost is getting a little bit here and there, but I feel like that's Penguin Mafia playing into our, uh, the Googly Boppers more than the Googly Boppers getting that advantage. Googly Boppers need to be setting that tone, getting the pace going, so that they can start making this match happen on their terms. They want an engagement. You need an engagement to in order to get that victory. You can't expect to start it on the cap. That's a great way to lose on Ensk, just starting the engagement on the cap. You need to start it elsewhere first, sometime earlier and then make it happen on the cap later once you have an advantage, some some way to bring it home. Spotting right. does happen as there is a push happening out, and Quick Death does push into a number of takes. He is Whoa. tracked in the open, 786, 506. He takes down to 275, and Tuxilla may finish him off, down to 23 hit points. Oh, what a low roll. I there would, he goes, first tier eight down. That approach was not the best. Yeah, they uh, just pushed him without any knowledge of their enemy's yeah, positions. Yeah, I'm not sure why they're doing stuff like that now. The 1390 is going to ring around, trying to get loose change right now. He's only three or four shots away from dying, but Nias three is over there to help him out. Shots will go off. Tuxilla takes a lot of damage, catches on fire, but automatic ext extinguisher will put it out. Loose change taking a big shot, only one shot away from dying, and there he goes. Death warmed over, going to try to. Yes, he does connect with Tuxzilla. He's only one shot away from dying, but Bananas to the wall host. He's going all Bananas to the wall host. He's going in crazy. This is such an advantage right now. Death Warmed over is at full health, and Ooh. wow, track shot that does not pen. Zombie food should come in to help in a moment. Ro uh, Rex Rox is completely out of the fight at this moment. He'll be reloaded shortly. He may find Sovereign Zool, but Death Warmed over is still managing to avoid taking a lot of damage. Bananas to the wall host may go down in a moment. Let's see. Next shot by Death Warmed over. Takes him down to 72, and the first shot by Rox does miss. Second shot is a bounce. Third shot will... May, will it connect? Oh, is He's, he clipping? He this may be the clipping. This time to be clipping. He had two shots to do this. And now Zombie Food is finished clipping. He's just going to tear Death Warmer apart. Wow, what a brutal mistake right there. I think he spent those first, those other two shots on Sovereign Zool. Oh, I'm Maybe sure. in the uh, IS-3, but going in without that full clip, that hurts so much. Well, it just it's brutal the fact that he missed those two shots. He should have been alive in this, and he could have at least ran away and then helped out killing uh, that other 5100. But as it stands, Googly Boppers will tie things up. Uh, kind of crazy play coming out of this ends game. I mean, really audacious stuff with that IS-3 being pushed down the 4-5 line. He, that's normally not it's a position very risky. ever, ever pushed down. I mean, I, you have no cover at all. I think I see what the mistake they made was. Here's the mentality that they went into this mm -hmm. with. They saw the position out of Armor Ghost and some IS-3s earlier. Remember, that was in the courtyard of yeah. Ensk in the southwest, further west of where they actually made yes. their attack happen. So they didn't think, they didn't take into account the range of motion their opponent could have taken, the changes they could have had in their positioning. Mm -hmm. And when they didn't take into account that, their counterattack was timed too late and push them actually into a position that their opponent had shifted into. Because you saw that shift from the southwest quadrant further east towards the middle onto their own cap, they were right there ready for that push. And so IS-3s pushed straight into a crossfire. But you know what? I'm even going to counter that with mm -hmm. a 1390 or a 5100 is 10 times better for that same run than an IS-3. 
It's faster, it's stronger, it does more damage. You need your French tanks to be in those types of positions, not your IS-3s. Yeah. So even if with that assumption, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to use an IS-3. Yeah, I don't think he was even there to scout. I think they he just... He was there for the flank, you're saying? He, he was there for a... Fl well, maybe not even a flank, just to bring around so you have this different kind of concave on that west position. Yeah. But the mentality doesn't... It, do it doesn't... Com it's not compatible with what they ran into, so it do, it doesn't matter what okay. whatever they put in there. It yeah. would have died very quickly. Yes, I, yes, an IS-3, well, 1390, saying, anything would have been just completely nuked. That's right, but yeah. still, like what what I'm looking at is assuming that they are in that southwest quadrant, yeah. sending an IS-3 to do that run is still the worst tank you could send. I, I agree with you there. Right? Yeah, the IS-3 like, is going to be late to the party if an engagement happens before they intend exactly, to. Exactly, exactly, yeah. and you want them. Uh, eating up as much hit points before they die, of course, and in the very beginning stages. But we now move over to Ruinberg. Ruinberg, that split map, 50-50, of urban and very openness. We've seen a lot of very creative play. And I have to say, a lot of cap pressure being put on south to north and lately in the qualifiers, it being uh, so, so ineffective. Yeah, just, I don't know why the Delta Village isn't being used as much. It's just, I don't get it. We have seen a lot of city play. Yeah. Just so many one-line pushes. Actually... I think I remember almost every team from the south has done some form of a one-line push. Yeah. There's been maybe one bit of a delta play village. There was even something right up the middle. One team in spawning in the north just said, we're going up the middle, and went with that. Uh, I'm, I'm not so confident in a lot of the strategies we've seen, the approaches to ruin. Do you know what's the greatest counter to mm -hmm. uh, to the one-line push, what in my it? opinion? Pubstars did it. They shoved Miserable inside this little oh, nook. Yeah. And he just stayed there, was able to proxy spot everybody coming out, and nobody could touch him. It was really, really fascinating. Make sure you go back to the WGLNA Season 2 Finals to check out more of that information. But we're already in-game. Guys, let's get into Ruiner. For tanks, Penguin Mafia on the left side. It's 5100, an IS-3, a T-32, an Object 416, and a 1390. Got that rainbow format. Other side, we have two 5100s, a Pershing, a T-69, and a 1390. So favoring, what is that? Favoring, well, no IS-3s. Wow, and a Pershing being brought. That's a little bit interesting. You're you're really sacrificing Alpha in this. This is, you're going yeah. for DPM. Every single tank here has some solid DPM. 1390 is going to bring that, well, actually, we're going to go with Burst for 1390s and I and 5100s. And the T69 uh, has kind of Burst. Utility. Let's, let's say utility. Utility. I, but yeah. the thing is, I really don't like heat rounds. I just don't like heat rounds right now. I don't think they they perform as well as APCR. So it, even considering that, I say the T69 is okay, but I'd bring a Pershing instead. All right, well, we do have our opening scout runs. Terrible X is going to see Tuxzilla over here. And uh, nothing too much. They do see an IS-3 quick death moving across into the west side. It is a delta play for the red team. Delta the blue play. Boppers. What is it over for your side? Delta play for the blue team as well, Andre. Actually, Death Warmed Over, I believe, was spotted in the opening run as he made it uh, all the way up to about uh, F9, F0, and was able to hide out in a bush. At the same time, Ooh. big slow tanks like Blaze Zero are making it across in the fastest possible drag, uh, speed, but the Googly Boppers are not going to try and capitalize on this weak yeah. position. They didn't get to spot it. Tuxilla avoiding t uh, any kind of secondary uh, tertiary scout runs. Uh, I just... Being scared off by Terrible X. Terrible X has dominance over this hill. He oh. just he owns it now. This is his area to scout, and Tuxilla has really given up that advantage. I'm surprised right now that Googly Boppers, they saw the T32 and IS3 push across, and they didn't try to take the EF line. I mean, that's normally the line that you will take. Tuxilla is over here a little bit, but that gets great shots on you. And if anybody, I mean, that's a great place to initiate because it's long distance. There's RNG that comes into that. So you're only hitting, you know, 60, 70% of the time, but still. Mm -hmm. And then a turret breaks everybody for, for a big initiation with your other four tanks. Yeah, getting a turret break would be so crucial to this, but we need they need to find the one tank that they can get the crossfire on. That tank they can get the crossfire on, I believe, is on the Googly Bopper side. The tanks that are in the middle of yeah. the formation between the 1390 and the heavy tanks in the east. Those mediums, that Pershing and that T69, they are the weak point that P Penguin Mafia can push on, and the point for Googly Mumpers to push on is Blaze Zero and Quick Death, possibly. Oh but no! Oh, Bananas the Wall Host just shot Sovereign Zool. What? Why did he? How? And, and that was a T69 shot, so he's going to be reloading. Oh. And he, he just motioned that but, he's reloading. But it's okay, it's... The Penguin Mafia hasn't seen it. They haven't seen anything. It's just huge mistake, uh, but they can still come back from this. Just This is one of those C'est la vie moments. No. Stuff happens, no. man. 
No bananas to the wall host. Uh, you're, you're two bananas to the wall did host. He, right did he? Was he looking for the 1390 uh, shot? I I think he was, and then he just and he got simped. Snapshot. He just got simped yeah. by the Pershing. Amazing. Wow, the that's terrible so X did go up for uh, a nice little scout run. I like this. He's doing it again. He could take a hit. Shots fired by Sovereign Zul, but it hits dirt. It's a very hard shot to make because wow. once Terrible X gets spotted, he's already on the return run. Blaze Zero is moving up on the T32. They have seen the damage that's out there, and they know they haven't gotten any of this damage out. They're very, they're probably very confused. They're like, did he shoot one of his own guys? They're figuring this out just now. They're moving up, and right. there, a shot on Sovereign Zul takes him down to 921. Just huge disadvantage right now, but it looks like Blaze Zero has taken a shot himself. 1277 hit points. Man, Tuxilla is playing so defensive right now. He has to be more active than this. He needs to be that EF line crossfire. If not, you're just gonna you're gonna be behind. And we're gonna see this same run from Terrible X. You need to shut down Terrible X. So get spots on him and most importantly get shots on him. If you do do not deny him from doing the same run. I mean, look with what's happening right now on the red team. They've all congregated in the same place. They're all shoved over. They only have one move. It's either to fully retreat or to go forward on the zero line. Yeah, the ba they're backing up now. They've given up this position. They don't think they have anything. They don't have the intel. They don't have the scouting right now that's really giving them an advantage. Penguin Mafia is winning this just based on posturing. Like, that's, that's all they have to do right now. They're yep. just posturing up, and they've got the, uh, they're actually winning this position because of that, even though the advantage goes to Googly Boppers for this Delta position. At least they had the jump. They have better time to get into solid positions. They just are not getting that scouting, that vision that is so crucial. Now, you can't move without it. Where is Bolt Upright and Loose Change right now? All right, Bolt Upright. Tell me where they are. Bolt Upright is all the way in the west, and so is Loose Change. They are moving up the one okay, line right so now. They're doing exactly what they need to be doing. They're going to put cap pressure on right now. All they, the way in Delta 1 right now. And they might have seen uh, Antosha. That's still over here in the center, so they know it's a 2v1 at the cap. I don't this think they saw Antosha. To, oh, they didn't. Uh, they haven't really. I don't think. If Antosha proxy spots someone, yes. But I don't think any proxy spotting has been happening. Okay. Well, still, it's going to be a 2v2 at worst, right? Uh, a 2v1. Yeah, at worst 2v2, and it looks like Loose Change and Bolt Upright are more confident. They're just going in here. They're already spreading. They're looking around for that T1. We have Bolt Upright breaking off to the left, looking for a T1. Where is the a T1 for Googly Boppers? There has to be one back here. And he, a Bolt Upright will actually hide in a bush in the back, maybe? Oh, Cap has begun, and Armor goes to spotty. He unloads on oh, Loose Change, no. down I mean, to 18 hit points, and now the return fire will come. Bolt Upright zeroes, and Armor Ghost goes down. I mean, he should not have been doing that. You wait until the very end so that you can at least reset the cap, but don't start out right there because now they have nothing left at home. Engagement and Tosha oh. will also go down. That is both T1s down. Huge T1 advantage. It looks like Bolt Upright's going to try and screen the cap in order to get vision. It's perfect. Yeah, because now what happens is if you have a return from the Googly Boppers, you have a T1 spotting the open field. Now they can just get up on this road and shoot anyone that uh -oh. attempts to return. And anyone. Tuxilla, he's going to be the first one. The 1390 is so brittle at this point. Terrible X lining up the shot. Tuxilla, will he get shot out? Because if he is able to get over there, that will be the saving grace. He does take one shot from the 1390, and it looks like he will. Oh, down to 87 hit points. Just one more shot. Terrible misses, and then more misses as Terrible takes hits. He focuses, and he... Goes, Tuxil oh, actually goes wow. dark for a moment. He takes fire, though, from the T1s down to 49 hit points. Okay, he will that finish will help out. out, and they're both on the same side. Tuxilla, though, uh, in a very delicate situation. Loose change. Can he do it? No, he will not. Double tap, but it is a 4v5 on the other side. Zombie food takes a big hit. He's down to 491. The rest of his squad not looking too good. It doesn't help that uh, that Pershing already went down, of course with the help of Bananas to the Wall Of course, host. Blaze Zero has also been taking that. It's actually still a 4v4, but health points going so much in favor right now of Penguin well, Mafia. Well, it's a 3v4 because uh, the 1390 isn't over here. He still has quite a bit of time to get over here. Quick death trying to push on in. This is a much heavier lineup, though, with the Penguin Mafia. I mean, they have the IS-3. They have the, uh, what else? The, the 416 and 5100. Things are looking good right now for our... Penguin Mafias. Penguin Mafia just waiting for a reload, I believe, out of their 5100 before they make this oh, next engagement. Quick, quick death. <laughs> Bananas to the wall host. Big miss right there. Quick death will be covered, though. Terrible X popping on in here. But he goes down. Quick death. 16 hit points. And all of a sudden, things are turning around. I with love that this counterattack. They're taking advantage of the fact that Penguin Mafia are waiting for that reload. Wow. But it looks like they'll pay for it. Zombie food being out in the open, not taking any uh -oh. real cover. And death warmed over. He's the one to 
just clean everybody up now. The 5100 is reloaded. Easy kill. Tuxvilla Zero's coming on Baranish. in from the side. And it doesn't really matter because Death Warmed Over is just way too healthy right now. AMX 1390. Woo, nice shot in the move right there. But it's not going to be enough, Blue Kill. There's still a, a very healthy 5100. Well, Death Warmed Over, if he misses like this a few more times. But there are misses no. all across the board. Zeroing on his final shot. Tuxilla stays not gonna straight. Miss. Oh, he it misses. misses. He just he missed again. Uh, chances are Tuxilla can't bring this back because Rox is still at full hit points right now. But we can't be seeing misses like this or 1390 is going to be able to draw this one out. There's a minute 48 left. If Tuxilla actually by some chance gets away, he could draw this back. Yeah, that's true. That's definitely true. But this is going to be difficult. 5100 lining up the shot. Less than 100 meters. Is he going to? Oh, there Death it is. Death Warmed Over makes the shot. Easy peasy. Mm. There it is. Penguin Mafia will take it. Great play. Great T1s. This is what we were talking about in the very beginning of the show. T1s can make and break a team, and that's what we saw. Two T1s going over the west side, putting on cap pressure, forcing that 1390 out of there, and then from there, it's a formality. The game plays itself out because it's 4v5. Yeah, and it, but the thing is, Penguin Mafia made a little bit of a mistake that could have lost them that. They didn't kill the 1390 on the way back, and because that cap pressure stopped, we even saw the fight even out a little bit. Yeah, let's actually look at the detailed report. That will tell us about just how many misses there were. Even though they won, I mean, let's take a look at this 1390. We had seven shots out, three only connected. T32, six shots out, four only connected. IS-354, I mean, you can see that all the way down. And a lot of this had to do with that 1390. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the 1390 all game, not only at the end, yeah. but also in that mid game stage. Uh, really unfortunate, but you know, I think if they these guys got the press accounts, mm -hmm. They would be super good. <laughs> I don't know about a 1390 though. 1390, there's That's a lot. It's it's just you get a good player in 1390. They zero their shots. They stay patient and they don't let RNG make their shots hit. You let your yeah. you make it so you have that perfect reticle and you won't miss. It's tight enough to the point where if you lead your shot right, you're you're it's gonna be a like a one percent chance that you actually miss. <laughs> I was actually talking to Jackie Rudo about yeah. this on Falcom Gaming and he was like, oh wow, you zero your shot the shots. I don't do that at all. It's like. What the heck? <laughs> you got Falcom Gaming. How can you not zero your shots? Just that new accuracy, man. Just but too he beautiful. Is, he is so sick on the 416, man. If oh, you yeah. see this guy on the 416 and the waffles, unbelievable. Jackie Rudo was one of the, um, the uh, I guess, replacements from Season 1. I, I think he was. He was on Season 1, yeah. but he was one of the replacements back then. Yeah. And now he's on Season 2. He was permanent there, and he was just... You know, he was bringing home the bread, that's for yeah. sure. I think it was a time thing. It was like personal yeah. time. He was dealing with other real-life stuff because a lot of the players have, you know, their full-time jobs and they yeah. come and do this in the evenings. But what I'm trying through. to say is it is stylistic a lot of times, yeah. too. I mean, some people don't like to zero their shots. Some people do. I like to zero my shots. All day, every day. You like to zero your shots. Uh, Jackie Rudo does not like to zero his shots. But we're all successful, right? Oh, you two are <laughs> successful. Some, some 1390, okay. sir. Is that what you wanted to hear? Both of you are successful, Rupert. <laughs> Andre, you're doing just fine Thanks. in your 1390. Your um, Prokhorovka is our next map. Uh, very open map, of course. Hmm. Um, who do you think this would favor? Actually, we're going to jump into the game really fast. But who do you think this favors so far, just based on what you see? Based on the 1390 play, I'm really going to put this in favor of just Tuxilla Baranish. I think they're better 1390s than Terrible X okay. and Quick Death right now. Okay. We'll find out. That uh, does mean you're favoring the googly boppers right yes. now. But taking a look at the um, the tanks, we have a 5100. Kind of weird. Two T32s and two 1390s. We always talk about the 5100 on Prokhorovka. This kind of tells us that they're going over to the east side, but they are starting north. So we'll find out. On the other side, T32, Pershing, T69, two 1390s on the side of the googly boppers. All right, going to have to t pay attention to these opening scout runs. Yeah. are very important to the intel that we get gathered. I'm seeing uh, 5100 going west for the side of Penguin Mafia. I'm seeing T-32s possibly going to the east, destroying the uh, the stuff on the trash on the base. It's always important to do. I'm leaving that up has, that? Actu has seen actually victories and defeats against even Simp on this battle. This uh, is season crazy. One. I can't believe the opening run from, from your team, honestly. Yep. Uh, with the 5100, I think it's just so ineffective. It's Great scout run. Yeah, Baranish making a nice east side. Does he spot the 5100? Got a uh, nice west side by Tuxilla. Very wide, right into the bowl. There's a little bit of risk there on the return run, but Terrible X makes a really nice sweeping run. He spots a Pershing, 1390, all on the returns. And he's actually going to go up for a secondary run. He will spot Baranish in the 1390. And the T32, even Sovereign Zul, verifying that Bananas to the Wall host and Sovereign Zul are going to the west. 
great vision and knowledge out of the Googly, oh, yeah. out of the Penguin Mafia right now. Googly Boppers, what did they get out of this? Googly battle? Boppers saw both T-32s, both 1390s, and they're going for the engagement right now, knowing that these T-32s are a little bit isolated because they know the 1390 location. T-69s getting ready. T-32s are doing a good job along with side this Pershing, but Bananas to the Wall House needs to be careful. Still, a lot of damage is being done. Blaze Zero down to 740. Bolt upright down to 1311. Another great connection. 509 hit points. And where are those 1390s? They're starting to gang up on Baronish. Yeah, the flank is beautiful here. The flank shots, if these 1390s, yes, they do. I and mean, Rox has great shots. I love this setup. They predicted the Googly Bobbers perfectly. Sovereign Zul take it down to 884. Rox is locking down this position. And now the T32s for the side of Penguin Mafia will have a wonderful time trying to, uh, using their hull down and abusing it to just take down the yeah. T32. Sovereign Zul down to 2 35 more shots into Bandits to the wall host. Taxilla coming in, uh, maybe to help with this fight. If the engagement happens now, Rox will be able to finish someone off. Taxilla down to five, 336, beautiful track shot, 97, and he goes down. Bolt right, right finishing him off, and there goes Blaze Zero. Now the concave is on Bolt upright. He will be focused down as he's down to 357. Bananas to the wall host, though, down to 55. And there a trade for Blaze Zero to Bananas to the wall host. Terrible X going in on the T32. Sovereign Zul, six hit points. Terrible X misses a wow. shot. Is he reloading? He looks to be reloading. That is a huge mistake here. Terrible X is going to get chased down now. Really unfortunate by, uh, <laughs> by uh, Penguin Mafia, of course. Uh, to have a T32 so low and not being able to just take that kill. Baronish giving chase to Terrible X right now. Is he loaded? Oh, big miss. Shots in the move very hard. Yeah, they are. But he closed but the distance at this range. It's easy. Easy peasy. And there it is. Uh, still, it's not over. Uh, we still have a 5100 alive. And there are cap pressure. There is cap pressure being given right now. Shots on a loose change in the T1 Cunningham, but the trash on base was not destroyed. There, a solid shot right through the trash does finish him off. Now, Rocks on the 5100 is still alive with full hit points, and he does see Sovereign Soul oh, and no. the Pershing. Armor Ghost just just crushed his uh he, his uh what's it called his, oh, his cover. Yeah. But there's a minute 15, and Rox does put out a shot. I don't see it connecting. Almost connected on a T32. Rox tries to back out now, and he will be able to disengage Quick Death on the other side. Is spotted by Baronish, and he zeroes a shot on the T1 Armor Ghost. He fires. He does get the shot, but now he's getting unloaded into, and there he goes. Zombie Food finishing him. Actually, yeah, Zombie Food finishing him off. Yeah. And overall, I mean, it looks like just so far... Um well, the Googly Boppers, I think, were able to take advantage of just the immobility of the 5100 in the very beginning phase. Having that cross map shot is still very difficult, even though you have the crossfire. And I think overall, ha taking too much damage with those T32s. The T32s did a great job in the beginning stage to hold off the 1390s, or excuse me, not the 1390s, the T69s and the Pershing and the T32. Long enough for the 1390s to wrap around, but they still got a good 1,000, 1,200 damage. Not thousand Paying for that position thousand was very expensive. Yes, it was. It was too much. And even you said it. I mean, they did predict that concave, but it was a little bit too slow. They needed their 1390s there a little bit faster so they can remove as much DPM as possible. Still, I do want to say that it's possible for a single 5100 to do this. Baronish, only three shots away from dying. Sovereign Zul, one shot away from dying. How do you realistically approach this one 5100? Well, you, you just try and get everyone in there. You want to you want to make uh, rocks go after that T32. You want to bait him out. That's what I do. I'd say T32, get a hole down right around here, and let's try and spot him. Then get the others while Rox is trying to get that T32. Because think about this. He's going to want that. He's going to want that final kill, so he's got a 2v1. But it's a T32, oh. so uh, shot's going out because the T32's not here. Pershing getting a great hole down here. Second shot it. coming up shortly. Game should be over from here. Baronish yeah. oh, would he be missed. able to unload his entire uh, drum into his opponent and win the game. So as long as Pershing takes all the damage or even See, the... Rock switches to the T32. Can't resist that bait. You just can't. And there, he finished off. Delicious. And there it is. Cooley Boppers will tie things up 2-2. Two, two. We got a series, man. Yeah, really solid games. I love that out of the uh, the Google Bobbers. Just understanding when they needed to go and when they needed to not sit still. Sometimes forward is the best direction, even if you take a few hits for it. It cost them, but they did come out ahead. Fantastic job on Protorovka. Uh, what do you think the next map is for the Penguin Mafia out of this? I'm not sure, honestly. It, I'm trying to think of maps. Probably Himmelsdorf, actually. Okay. Himmelsdorf so go back to a city map. Yeah, the most standard. I really have to be critical on that 5100. I really felt like that was the 
not the optimal choice, especially when you're running something like that with double T32s and 1390s. What you need in that when you're trying to take an engagement and trying to be so aggressive with the bulls is you need something that is a little bit more mobile and can also brawl really, really fast. And 1390s, I would say, were out of position for that first fight, but also you're just lacking something. And a Pershing would have been better, a T69 even would have been better, another 1390 to have on the side. One of those three tanks, I think it's the best way to go, but having the 5100 cross shots, French tanks are not that accurate. Even with the accuracy improvement, you cannot say that you're gonna land 100% of your shots cross map. And I actually wanna go into that. Let me look at the report. And just look at the uh, the 5100 and see the effectiveness and efficiency. And you can see 17 shots out of those four penetrated. Four penetrated. Of the 17 shots fired. That's you got to expect more out of the 5100. Uh, but they can you from that distance? You can. You should be able to make mm. more than four sh more penning more than four penning shots, or at least more hits than that. Yeah. I think he was throwing shots out there, not letting his shots settle. We got and You have to let your shots settle. You can even say that of those four shots, probably one of those was at the end, right? Oh, uh, yeah, a few of those. We could, we could, uh, oh, we saw almost every single shot miss out of him right at the end there. Yeah, yeah or bounce. Okay, so maybe not, but still, four shots, I mean, that is, th I, I wouldn't even, uh, you know, be critical on the, the tanker at that point. Mm -hmm. I really feel like 5100s cannot be that reliable. It could be RNG, mm -hmm. you know? A lot of that could be there. It uh, could be, of course, player skill, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and just say overall that strategy with the 5100 on top of there, not having good depression, not having good shots, having really far shots, you're not going to be able to make those shots Effectively, yeah. you don't bring a 5100 to snipe. You just don't. That's right. Not on this kind of map. And when actually, the next map will be Mon uh, Cliff. 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 Yeah. So it was not Himmelsdorf. I'm wrong. They um, go for an open map, something where they can get a really quick engagement and force that brawl. Because <laughs> generally, the way it goes is you bring a lighter lineup, you go right to the middle, and if they bring something too slow, you're just going to waste them. You're just going to get all your autoloaders, all your 1390s up there, and you're just going to unload and get a huge okay. advantage right at the beginning. Now, we have seen T-32s being used on this map a little bit. I'm not a big fan. I prefer the Pershing 100% of the times over the T-32 on this map in particular. As you said, mobility reigns supreme. And that's what we should see. 1390s, T-69s, Pershings, maybe Object 416s. I'm not too keen on them, but really those three tanks. Medium tanks and light tanks, that's it. We'll find out. Map's already started. Let's get into it. called it, Andre. Yep. Four 1390s and a Pershing against three 1390s, a T-69 and a Pershing. It looks like Googly Boppers is uh, playing a little less uh, mobile, but it's still really, really mobile. It's comparable to their opponents. It's that uh, Pershing, er, no, it's the T69 instead of a 1390. So what I find interesting is Luce changed in 1390. He's actually set up for passive scouting. He's got a camo net, binox, and vents. So he, I'm not expecting to see him hit a lot of shots, especially on the move. Or if he stops, he's gonna have to really let that zero. He doesn't have a gun laying drive. Mm -hmm. Just uh, I, not my preference for a 1390. Okay. It's, it's a really strange build. Uh, We'll have to see how that works out for him. If if they seem to want to employ right. that in some way or another. Uh oh, Baronish, be careful. Of course, there's still another good 10 seconds before um, before everybody's reloaded. But terrible X and quick death are spotted out here. Opening runs are very standard. Although Baronish is going to be way way out of position for quite a long time. Let's take a look at everybody else. Tuxilla is moving on up, and it's standard center control. But they've given up west side altogether. What do we see from the blue team? Well, we had that west side up there, and now we've got something up the middle. I have huge advantage going to Penguin Mafia oh, yeah. here in the initial engagement. Incredible. Terrible X can peek out here now and maybe shoot Tuxilla up and as the wall or Sovereign Zool. He goes for Sovereign Zool, and there's a solid connection, taking down to 1193. But Quick Death did get a return fire, so it's not that bad, but with, um, wow, Quick Death taking a lot of damage. There needs to be some activity in the front to turret break some of these these tanks right now. Death warmed over and Blazier are stepping over. Bananas, Thwalhos, and Tuxilla, though, they're right there as well. Uh, and I think Quick Death is being a little bit too predictable. He can't be keep poking out of the same place. Armor Ghost also uh, right around the corner. He's not proxy spotting anybody. Baronish is still out of the fight, isn't he? 
He's, where is he right I, now? I don't he's, even know where he is. Oh, he's, yeah, there he is he completely he's, out of the yeah, fight. He can create some crossfire on Quick Death and Terrible X. Terrible X and Quick Death can very easily put themselves against a wall slightly to their north yeah. and put shots out on the tanks to their east while the engagement comes in with three other tanks that Pershing and two 1390s. You'd see a victory right there. And actually, there goes a tank. There's Rox taken down by Antosha in the T1s. That is a T1 victory. Actually, Rox also has gone down, so it is a trading of T1s. For both teams. There's too many. Look at this. Look at red team. There's too many turrets right now onto that west side. Don't poke out. You already know it's going to be bad. You need Very more spot. center play if you are uh, Penguin Mafia. Remember, this is the match point for both of these teams. Whoever wins here will move on into the qualifiers. Whoever loses has to just pack it in and wait for next week. There's only one more shot after this. Yeah, Baronish, while you were talking, did get spotted. And actually, I didn't notice this before, but from the middle, apparently, they have shots out on him. And he took another hit. He is completely locked out of this battle, of this fight. He is so far out. And it looks like, actually, Quick Death will be jumping off the hill along with Terrible X. And they're going to actually go try and jump on the cutoff Baronish. Wow. Now, that could prompt a mid-fight, but the health point pool is certainly in the advantage of Penguin Mafia. I Those 1390s so. could come in and create that fight. Quick Death is kind of taking a bit of a risky right. approach. T1 Here and Tosha go. is spotted, so this is revealed. You will see a fight in the middle now. Can they get shots, though? Terrible X is approaching. Baronish knows what's going on. Play Zero getting fight. focused. Down to 459. Death Warned over 294, oh and he will go down. God. What a crucial kill for the Googly Boppers. And there, even the Pershing will go down. Two tier eights down, while no tier eights are down for the Googly Boppers. And look at this. Baronish joins the fight. It is a 5 V1 now. Loose change getting completely destroyed. Crucial mistake for Penguin Mafia getting spotted out by that T1 of Googly Boppers. And Tosha yep. spotted a crucial just flank right there. Without him, loss. And With him, complete and total victory right here. Great reaction from Baronish as well. Just to isolate the other two tanks, the two 1390s that are over there saying, okay, we're not even going to worry about you. Let's just go over this hill. You will have zero shots on me. And now Quick Death and Baronish, or excuse me, Quick Death and Terrible X are just like, what do we do from here? We're up against, count it, five tier eight tanks. This is not looking good, and they had to have known this. I can't believe they actually did that movement. They, I know you talked about it, but it just seems so theoretically incorrect with the, that circulation. The reason I was thinking it would be all right was not expecting that T1 to get the vision, but when the T1 gets the vision, it changes the entire story. Yeah, well, to do that when you don't know the positioning of the T1s, yeah. that's what I would you know, be a little bit critical of. Maybe send only one tier eight down and, and they keep your up. Yeah. Exactly. And until you actually see where the other tier eight is, but the last person alive is bolt upright. And uh, he, well, he might go down or he I might just. Uh, I think Penguin Mafia got complacent in the middle. That's, I think, really what happened. Just they got complacent when they saw that flank coming. They should have recognized what the numbers that they were losing up top. And you notice how they backed off. Penguin Mafia wasn't trying to skirmish anymore. So they weren't prepared for when that push happened. The push could have been uh, deflected by Googly Boppers. Uh, I don't know. I think so. I think they could it's have a, made them. It's so a when 3v5. They, it, a 3v4 and then 5 later. And it could have been oh, yeah, cap yeah, pressure while that happened. You pull back with the others while you bring in that flank. But it's only one 1390 in there. And then it's a Pershing and a T69 against yeah. 1390s and then But the, what if the you're not even there? Pershing. What if you are not present when the Googly Boppers try and make a push right through the middle? Oh, sure, sure. But you're giving up center control. No matter what, I think it's a losing position. Yeah, well, if you want to make that flank, you got to give it up. Well, well. Googly Boppers will move on forward. They've won it 3-2. And uh, congratulations to them as we'll be seeing them in the semifinal. Well, uh, who will they face tomorrow? I'll have to check that out during a break if we get one. Our next battle will be... The C'est la Vie versus uh, Resistencia Armada GE. I call them Rage. I looked at the uh, make an acronym out of their names. It's just Rage. Oh. Solid sense. team. Uh, we actually haven't seen Rage get any fights. They had a bye last night, and I believe they may have had a bye the night before. Uh, C'est la Vie, we've seen them before. Solid team. Probably okay, one so of my favorites to go through. Big favorites against an unknown right now. Yeah. So anything can happen. Guys, we'll take a short break when we come back. The continuation of these qualifiers in match number two. Don't go anywhere.